It's April 2023. It's on for judicial review in lieu of a citizen's review panel. We're conducting the review hearing virtually using Zoom. And uh, we have a bunch of dedicated and not so dedicated lawyers, but that's it. No parties. No extraneous witnesses. Let's see, the case manager, Mr. Moore, who's replacing Ms. Wilcox, who was replaced by Ms. McKay. So a long line of people in one year's time. Um, Ms. Crane represents the mother who's not here, Lo Lois Kimball. Um, Ms. Miller is the attorney guardian at Lightham for the children. They're pretty young. Did you excuse them? Judge, I did not. I had emailed uh, Ms. McKay on March 18th. I didn't know Prentice was now the case manager and asked her to get me the uh, foster parents' contact information and to have them on Zoom. And you didn't get either. I didn't, and I didn't get a response from Ms. McKay, but that might have been because it had been transferred to Mr. Moore. I just didn't know. Did she leave or is she there in another capacity? No, she's gone. <clears throat> yeah, Ms. Uh, Wilcox is gone, Your Honor. Where did Ms. Wilcox go? She works with uh, GPAC now. With who? <laughs> With, with our education department. Oh, okay. No, I didn't email Miss Wilcox. I emailed Miss McKay. Yeah, she's gone too. Oh, okay. None of them can stand to work with you, Prentice. You need to soften up. I guess I'll be going next. Um, And Mr. Skavonic, last but not least, is the attorney for DFACS. And I, I'm scared to ask Mr. Skavronic to give me his summary because he said he didn't know anything and was going to ask a bunch of questions. So um, I, I did get a court report from Mr. Uh, Moore, Your Honor, but uh, since he took the case over recently, it's missing some information. So I need to ask him about that. Well, you go ahead and you tell me what little you know and you ask what little you don't know. So it's very little that I do know other than the fact that the mother's incarcerated in, I believe it's the Bucks County Jail. I keep trying to find an inmate registry that will let me see if she's still there. And there apparently isn't one that you can access online. Um, it's all these private, like, you know, uh, oh, pay. pay us yeah. money to see if somebody's there kind of deal. She's not still there. Where is she? Um, I forwarded y'all an email. The mother was accepted into some sort of rehabilitation program. Let me pull that up. Um, so she's she was still in jail. She she accepted into that program. Uh -oh. However, she has, she has to plead out the jail before she can go to that program. And she didn't have a hearing date the last time I met with her. Okay, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Um, so, yes, she's been accepted into something called Hope Farms. Um, and it that was dated March 27th. And they needed her to enroll within 14 days because they could only hold the bed open um, for that long. I forwarded that to, to the department um, and Alyssa and Ann. Um, back on yeah the 27th so she didn't have a hearing date Prentice, to be able to go to that no i met with her on the 28th okay. and she said that she needed a she had to plead out she's gonna plead guilty to her charges um she had four charges two felonies and two misdemeanors okay what were they uh, one was forgery. I think one of them was identity theft. In a nutshell, she was working at this residence home and um, she was stealing information and using credit cards. I'm going to reach out to the facility and ask whether or not 
they have an update. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Moore, uh, uh, when did the mother get incarcerated, to your knowledge? She told me she had been there since mid February. Okay, so February of 24. Yes. Okay. Had she been visiting with the children from the period from when we were last in court in October of last year till February? Was she visiting? We had a yeah. hearing on January 9th, 2024. He was having visits at the defects office on Mondays and Wednesdays. And she was pretty consistent with the visitations. Okay. And then from the court report that I got from you, it looks like the mother still has not done a drug screen since November of last year. Is that correct? I didn't find one in our system to show that she had completed one. And then she has not been in prior to getting incarcerated and potentially going into this rehab program. She's not been in a substance abuse treatment since September of last year. No. No, that's not correct. Or no, she's not. No, been in. no she has not been in any rehab that I have seen. Okay. So that, and then we reported some of that back in October, but I just wanted to uh, clarify um, and then was the mother in any kind of prior to going into jail in February, was she in, in any kind of therapy? Um, I think they were trying to get her, um, some, some individual therapy, but she was not being compliant. So I didn't see any therapy notes, but I did see their referral being sent for her to, um, do therapy. Okay. And then... Uh, with regards to the mother employment or income, since you've been the case manager and in your review of the file, and again, I'm just going from October when we were last in court till now, have you received any evidence from the mother that she is employed or has stable income of any kind? She, she was employed at the, as a, at the residence home. That's how she got the charges. Okay. Did she ever provide you with any proof of that, though, like a paycheck stub? Uh, anything no. no. And what about stable housing, stable place to live? No. And, and this is the mother that had been going back and forth between her, uh, the grandmother of the children in Monroe, uh, Georgia, in Walton County, and here. Have you gotten any kind of evidence from the mother that she had a stable housing? She don't have. She didn't have stable housing. Um, the grandmother, she had told us at one point that, that she was living with the grandmother and the grandmother said she wasn't. That's the only housing I've seen. Okay. Um, and have you had any discussions with this uh, treatment provider that Ms. Crane was talking about that if the mother uh, pleads out on her criminal charges that she would go into this, uh, I'm assuming a substance abuse rehab facility of some kind, correct? Correct. That's what it is. I haven't talked to them, but I did speak with the jail when I went down to see her and they confirmed like, you know, the, the facility and everything mom had said. However, I don't know if she would plead out in time to get that bed that's available because she didn't have a court date. Um. I was going to ask something and I totally lost my train of thought on that, but I'll come back to that. Um, with regards to the, uh, the, uh, okay, I remember what I was going to ask you. And did the jail tell you whether or not that rehab facility would be like an inpatient rehab? And it, it is. All right. And would she be then required? as part of her criminal case to undergo and complete that rehab program to your understanding? Yes, I think that is a part of her plea deal she's trying to take. Okay. And that was something that the department had wanted was to get her into an inpatient treatment and she was being resistant to doing that up until now. Correct. All right. 
What about Baylor and Hasley? There's something about um, there being issues with regards to play therapy. What's the status of finding play therapy for either or both of those children? We don't really have uh, a lot of providers that do play therapy. So what Baylor and Hazley have had in the meantime is just behavioral aid services. Um, Baylor do receive MAC services. So he has um, iffy services in place, which is like intense um, services. So he has like providers that's helping him out. As far as Hazley, she has just a behavioral aid and that's it. Some behavioral aid, MAC services, and iffy services? Yes, that's for Baylor. Okay. What about Hasley? She's just only had a behavioral aid. She hasn't um, crossed over into MAC services yet. Okay. And I think I read in there both of those children are in daycare. And ba Baylor goes to elementary school as well. Does he have any issues at school? Does he have behavioral issues at school? No. Only at home and only at daycare. Yeah. Is he, uh, Baylor got any kind of IEP or anything like that? No. Um, we put him on the list to get tested for autism. And do you uh, have any kind of time frame as to when he may get that assessment? Um, the earliest time they had was May, mid-May. So it'll be sometime next month. Um, <clears throat> have you received any proof from the mother that she had attended and completed the additional 12 units of parenting that was recommended for her? No. Um, and then the uh, permanency plan for the children and the mother is currently reunification. Is the department asking for a change to concurrent plans of reunification and non-reunification termination of parental rights at this time? Yes. Does the department currently intend to file for termination of parental rights? Um, it'll have to be staffed. Okay. You haven't act nobody's actually said at this point that you're seeking to terminate. No. And where are the children placed? Baylor is placed um with a foster parent out in Covington. Hazley is placed with a foster parent in Stone Mountain. Are they still the Sparks and Fields foster homes? Yes, sir. And there's a possibility that Hazley will be moved soon to uh, the Ryan family. They were a uh, victim of kin that mom gave us. So we were in the process of evaluating them to possibly move uh, Hazley to them. Okay. And what about the, and I was going to ask about the Ryans. What about them and Baylor? Are they interested in being a potential placement for him? No, they only asked about, hey, they only were interested in Hazley. They're split up because of some sort of behavior issue, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Baylor's, Baylor's behavior is, is the, ascent, was the reason they, they were split. Yeah, but you said he was only having those at daycare and at the foster home? Yes. So in the beginning, ba Baylor was aggressive towards Hazley. So he was basically abusing her in, um, on top of his other behaviors like head banging and stuff like that. So that's how they ended up being in two separate placements. Right. No, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have any other questions for Mr. Moore, Your Honor. Anybody else? Ms. Uh, Miller or Ms. Crane? No, Judge, I think Mr. Skabronik covered mine. I wanted to know where they were placed is what's my big question, but he, he explained that. I don't have anything, Your Honor. I will. I have reached out to the facility, and as soon as I have an update, I will send out an update to everyone, but 
What's it called, uh, Allison? It's called Hope Farms. Um, it, I believe it is a faith-based program. I've heard of it before. Um, let me see here. I'm looking for the, they sent a letter. Yeah, Hope Farms. Um, and it's the Hope Farms Recovery Center in its Locust Grove. And the, their, their official, they're a nonprofit. Their official is Hope Farms Recovery Center, Inc. Because I know Judge Bortles had had some questions about some of these places as being just like sober living places and not actual rehab facilities. And do you know what, if this is like a like an actual accredited substance abuse rehabilitative uh, facility? I don't know if they're considered accredited. I'm not even sure that accredited is required as long as the services they provide, you know, cover like what the department would provide. I've got another case like that. So if they're doing substance abuse assessment and and substance abuse counseling or whatever and that's what i will find out and tell them i i need information on that because if it's not going to meet the same requirements as what the department would need then she's going to need to do whatever y'all have yeah the only thing i would point out um when we were last in court as well on uh, october 10th of last year the court had ordered that um the mother submit to all requested drug screens and that she maintain sobriety and that she make further progress on her case plan. And if not, that the court was going to uh, look at uh, potentially ordering the mother into a residential substance abuse treatment program, which it sounds like she's already going to be ordered into. But I think the court was also looking because we had talked about potentially going to concurrent back in October and the court was not inclined to do that, um, given the lack of progress that the mother has made at, uh, in the intervening six months uh, that we have now uh, gone through, you know, not having had any further drug screens, being incarcerated since February, um, not making any other progress with regards to her counseling. I'm really the only thing that the mother had been doing was, you know, visiting with the children on a consistent basis. And given that the children have now been in care for 12 months and the lack of progress, I think that would warrant at this point a change to concurrent. Well, neither child is in a prospective adoptive placement that I'm aware of. And mom is out of pocket in jail right now, which is certainly not the fault of the kids. Um, it's her fault, but um, I don't see the need to rush into that. Um, because I, I just I don't like getting to um, put up or shut up time for TPR, and we don't have anything for the kids other than still stay in foster care. They can stay in foster care with their parents still involved. Yeah, I get that. I'm not asking for a straight re non reunification, Your Honor. I'm just basically going at this point. I think it would behoove to be going at looking at a two pronged approach for this mother, given the fact that the, again the children have been in care for 12 months. They're very young. The um, you That's know cool. I don't know what the status of this prospective uh, uh, placement is with the Ryans is for Hasley. That may very well be an adoptive placement. We don't know at this point. But I don't know that there's anything that the statute says that they have to be in a prospective adoptive well, placement. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You're right. But that's my thinking. <laughs> when I try to process when I'm ready to do that. I mean, this, when we change, it needs to be it needs to be a realistic opportunity for realization of permanency, which we're not at. Um, and some, unfortunately, some cases we never get at. at um, like, like I said, Your Honor, you, you made very specific in, in the findings uh, and in the order from October, you know, that mom must submit to all screens, must refrain from any 
controlled yeah. substances, test negative, um, and then uh, court will shall review the mother's progress on her case plan goals, including consistency in submitting the screen, sobriety, and other pertinent matters. I mean, she's she's been on notice for six months and done little, if anything. Mr. Moore, the, my notes from January the hearing, I think we had that hearing because you were asking me to change the permanency plan then in October. And um, you were, I was told that, and this was probably not by you, but by one of these other ladies, um, that y'all were waiting on a mayor group to approve play therapy for Baylor. Did they refuse to? To authorize it, just hadn't located a plate a plate therapist. Well, what happened to? I mean, years ago we used to have people in play therapy all the time. Where'd they yeah. all go? I ha I have no clue. So the only thing that's I think that's one of the questions Mister Stravonic asked is ba Baylor gets Max services, which is the CSI and the Ify services. So uh -huh. he have services in place. He was making progress. She did do her psych eval. She was visiting, but she wasn't staying sober. She wasn't testing. When's the last time you drug screened her? When I got the case, she was already incarcerated. And looking back in the system, she hadn't had a drug screen look like none of this year. And she got incarcerated in February? The last screen that I've got in the uh, uh, notes, Your Honor, was uh, November 10th of last year. Well, um, I, I mean, it sounds like she, and maybe sort of coerced because she's in jail, but... Um, She's limited into what she can do about rehab until they work out whatever she's got going on with um, the criminal justice system in Butts County about going to rehab. It's, I guess as a condition of some kind of sentence, or maybe they were going to put her in drug court. They have a drug court down there, or did. I think they still do. Don't you um don't you go down there some Miss Crane? Yes, Your Honor, quite frequently. They do they do have a program and one of the things that they do is uh they will negotiate for the release if they are going into a program that they've been, you know, accepted into like Hope Farms. Um so it's very possible. I mean, if she she got a court, if she was able to get a court date within the time frame and her public defender or whatever was working with that to get that done, it's very possible that this program would be accepted by that court. But they they would not, would not require necessarily to go through the drug court program to do that, would they? No. Okay. Because we time we take people in mental health court but make them go to rehab before they come to back to the court. Uh, at least, at least short term, like 30 days. Uh, we've had a couple have to go for longer than that before they could start the, the accountability court program. But, um, so these kids hadn't seen their mom in two months, at least. And that's just looking back, Your Honor, you're asking about the drug screens. Since we were in court December, October 10th, the mother had a, a urine screen October 11th, another urine screen October 19th, um, 
another urine screen, November 3rd, those were all negative. And then her last screen was a November 10th urine screen that thought was positive for uh, cannabinoids or THC. And there's been nothing since that time. So it's been, you know, five months since her last screen. And I, I guess she's been incarcerated for some of that time. But there's been at least three months where she didn't do a screen. She, I have a note in the file about Celebrate Recovery. She must have said she was going to go to that, which is not therapy or treatment. It's just, you know, community um, support. Um, let me ask the questions. Reasonable efforts have been made. Uh, the court will find any material portion of the case plan not been implemented by the department. No, sir. Any no, legal no. required services not being afforded the, the parties. No, no sir. The case plan is reunification and the agency is uh, advocating for switching it to concurrent with TPR adoption. Yes, sir. Judge, I think we talked about the 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 change into the permanency plan in January of when we were Matias said we or Mr. Skabronik said we were in court in um we were there in January, but the notes say um case remains the same, working on case plan. So I took that to mean that I did not switch. But I, I, I know you didn't. I my note said not changing case plan, but we'll um go over again in April. Okay. Well, that's what we're doing, I think. I think so. Um, visitation is not appropriate because mom is incarcerated. She had a she was visiting until her incarceration. Um, the children aren't over fourteen. Mom is not making substantial progress, and I will switch to a concurrent case plan given the length of time. I hate it that she's in jail because there's not a whole lot she can do about it, but maybe that will prompt her to call her public defender and get him or her to get her on a calendar. So the problem is, is that's a three county circuit and the, the judges ride the circuit and they don't, I bet they don't have those calendars, but I would think probably each one has a criminal caseload and they come once a month and hear them. Does that sound about right, Ms. Crane, or do they come? More often, that's what they used to when I worked when I practiced down there. But it no, was it it is limited. It may not be that limited, but it is limited. Um, so they don't just have any dates that they can choose from, and they're not there. I mean, Judge. Well, no. I, is Judge Fierce's office in Barnesville or in Jackson? I'm not sure where his office is, and he lives in Jackson. But I, I was thinking at one time his office was in Barnesville. Um, since they redid the uh, did whatever they did with about the courthouse and moved into another building, he may have an office there in Jackson where he lives, so he doesn't have to run up and down the highway as much. But um, let, let me ask this with regards to um, you know, with the treatment. So this is again assuming that mom has a bed space available for her at this facility that she can go there. If that doesn't happen and if mom pleads out and then she's given probation, does the court want to do some kind of order that says that, you know, if the mother does not go into this program or something similar as part of their criminal case, that she's court ordered to go into a residential substance abuse treatment program as part of this case? Yes. I mean, you can. I thought that's what I'd already told her. Um that she was I mean, that's what she's, been, she's been recommended to do residential by her substance abuse assessments and her yeah. other assessments. She only attended one class of level one outpatient and she was refusing to go. She didn't show proof of online classes or NA attendance.
Yeah, the only thing she had said was that the celebrate recovery about four to five times, and yeah. so. Yeah. You can just put in that she's ordered to attend residential drug treatment, either as arranged through her, her their pending criminal proceedings or um, privately. So I'll just say, as part of our criminal proceedings, or as part of the, the uh, this court's think, case plan, or whatever, something yeah, like that. Yeah, but I mean, we will accept the one that's. At least initially, we're accepting it based on what Ms. Green said about it. If we find out that all it is is a sober living house, then we may, I may reconsider that. But these places are cropping up everywhere. I don't, we had a case the other day where Ms. Crane was offering to help transport her client to one that I'd never heard of either, down at the Rock or somewhere. Yes, they're just doing the Lord's work, Your Honor. I understand, but uh, <laughs> yes. But that now that program, that one that we're talking about, they do have the therapy and the yeah. you know all that stuff. So they're they're able to provide that. Okay. All right. Anything else we need to cover? Uh, another review date. Uh, Robin says you can figure it out yourself. Um. October 8th at 1 o'clock on Zoom. Y'all want to come back in person and quit doing Zoom? It doesn't matter. Matias does. Jessica's offering a, a, a bonus if you agree to come live. You said October 8th at 1? Yes. Mr. Moore, how do you and your fellow staff members at DFACS. Do y'all like the Zoom? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine either way. Well, this is the first time I've had you when I could hear you. You've had... Yeah, he's in his car. That's why he's it's, not in the... I'm, not it's because I'm on my phone and not the computer. My computer yeah. is messed up. It won't give me a new one. A new car or a new computer? New computer. Well, I wish I could do that for you, but I don't have any um, leverage over those issues. Our computers are probably as old as yours. I did get a $50 keyboard here not too long ago. It's come in very handy. All right. You can take an order and circulate it, please. And I'll see you back on October the 8th at 1 o'clock. Thank you, Your Honor. And if we need to come back earlier for time she gets out and we need to give her a pep talk or a tongue lashing, we can do either one. <laughs> So do we decide if it's Zoom or live? Zoom. Zoom. Okay. Somebody seemed to be, I was open for somebody to persuade me either way. And everybody's just gotten conditioned to go along with the status quo and not rock the boat. No, no, Your Honor. We're boat rocking over here. How are you boat rocking? Well, now you see me every day, really? Well, other than the change of your background, that <laughs> Veronic says looks akin to a jail cell. I didn't think that. It looks like a... Um, looks like the basement of a serial killer's house. Well, that's where I live, Matias. So wow. I'll see y'all on October 8th. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it looked like an old schoolhouse. Is it one of those uh, virtual ones or is it actually what's behind you? No, it, it is. My sick child is actually behind me. Okay. So I didn't figure y'all wanted to see that. Well, your your sick child is awfully quiet. That's he is. 
He is very, very quiet. Now, if he's if he's tied and gagged, we, we may have, maybe that's why you don't want us to see him. No, he's very quiet. All right. Okay. All right. Thank y'all. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Yeah.